Hello, everybody. Good morning. We've got more Seahawk stuff to go through today. And this isn't going to be a breaking news video. This isn't going to be discussing something that just happened. This is going to be delving into a general point of discussion concerning the Seattle Seahawks that has come up constantly in recent times. So here's the question. Right in the headline of this PFT article from like five weeks ago, have the Seahawks done enough on the offensive line to appease Russell Wilson? It's kind of the question that we always find ourselves asking over the last six or seven years because it seems like it's always a problem. But this offseason, it's been more pertinent than ever because Wilson himself, for the first time that I can recall, put the offensive line on blast after the season ended last year. He basically said, I'm tired of getting hit, and even if he didn't call any offensive linemen out specifically, the implication was, I want a better offensive line, I want more protection, I'm, I'm tired of getting hit. And that's certainly reasonable, and his comments were followed by an offseason where the Seahawks added one starting offensive lineman, and brought back the other four. So... A lot of Seahawks fans have been critical of this offseason, despite the fact that we have done a lot of other positive things, and that includes on the offense, because we didn't do enough to address the offensive line. Um, we, we still have four of the five starters from last year, and they are the same starters who Wilson was seemingly unhappy with. So I see this in my comments all the time. I see it in the Discord all the time. Uh, Seahawks fans unhappy with the offseason, even though we improved at receiver, we improved at tight end, we stayed good at running back because we brought back Carson. Even though we did these things for Wilson, there's a sentiment that we haven't done enough to protect him and keep him from getting hit. Therefore, the offseason is not good enough. So I'm going to make a couple of statements here that seek to push back against that narrative because I don't think it's true. So Two things I'm going to say about that. Number one, the Seahawks' offensive line was good last year, and it should be good again this year, as it is. Statement number two, the Seahawks have already made a major move to keep Wilson from getting hit more. It's called hiring Shane Waldron. All right. If you use Pro Football Focus, and I know Pro Football Focus has problems. I don't totally trust them. I don't think anybody should totally trust them. But when you're trying to evaluate offensive line play, they're probably the best resource the layman has. They do actually attempt to watch every play that these players play and uh, fairly evaluate how good they are. And if you take a look at the current starting offensive line for the Seahawks, let's, well, let's look at the numbers. Okay. Left tackle, Dwayne Brown. I'll give you a little bit of it. His age is concerning. His knee is concerning. But if you just look at the hard evidence right now, Dwayne Brown is still one of the best in the world at protecting a quarterback's blind side. This dude had a PFF grade of 87.3 last year. That is Pro Bowl, all pro type stuff right there. Okay? Dwayne Brown is not the problem. Damian Lewis. Okay, I'm not saying that it was perfect. We're talking about 12 penalties, led the league in penalties committed by a guard. And he allowed three sacks, which is not exactly what you're looking for from a guard in the NFL. But we're talking about a stud rookie here, a guy who is going to keep growing, a guy who, unless a crazy fluke happens, is going to be better this year. He should clean up a lot of the holes in his game. And as a rookie, he still had a PFF grade of 70.2, and that was with no offseason. He did not have an offseason as a rookie, and he came in and played well. Okay, and that's your left guard, because Damian Lewis obviously moves to left guard this offseason, as Carroll and uh, Schneider detailed recently. Okay, center, Ethan Posick. We all hate this guy, right? I, I kind of get it. I kind of understand he's not great. He might not even be good, but... If you think he's terrible, then I'm sorry. The numbers simply don't back that up. He committed one penalty and allowed two sacks in over 900 snaps last year. That's not bad. His PFF grade was manageable, 62.4, and that was with playing half the season, suffering the after effects of a concussion. 
So if you don't think Postic is good, I get it. But if you think he's terrible, I'm sorry, I don't see it. I don't see how anybody could think that taking a look at the raw numbers in front of us. All right. Okay, Gabe Jackson. He was the one guy we acquired to replace Upati and Jordan Simmons, hopefully. And hopefully Gabe Jackson can, unlike Upati, stay on the field for a whole game. And again, we're looking at a player here who played over a thousand snaps last year, committed three penalties, and allowed zero sacks. These are numbers that you would associate with a really solid guard. His PFF grade was not amazing, 63.7. You could get better than that. You would hope that he plays better than that this year, but it is still perfectly manageable. And finally, we have Brandon Shell, the starting right tackle, who didn't have an amazing season. He had some bad games. Uh, he did miss some time to injury. He only played in 670 snaps. Four penalties and three sacks allowed is eh. And his overall PFF grade was almost 73, which is pretty good. So I'm not seeing any reason to believe that this offensive line is as bad as some people would want you to believe. Now, the concerns I have are injury-related. Dwayne Brown is old and he's got a bad knee. Ethan Posick has gotten hurt a lot in his career. Shell got hurt a couple times last year. If you want to complain about trusting these guys to stay healthy, that I can get behind. But as football players, this is an offensive line that should be good this year just as it stands with these five players. All right, so now I'm going to take a look at another stat here. This is a, a next-gen stat. Um, I think Amazon um, accumulates these. So we're going to go to the uh, passing stats on nextgenstats.nfl.com. We're going to take a look at one particular number here. Time to throw, or TT. Let me zoom in a little bit so you guys can see even a little better. Okay, time to throw. Basically, the amount of time in seconds that passes between a quarterback receiving the snap and the quarterback throwing the ball on average. So if I, as a quarterback, play two snaps and on the first snap take two seconds between getting the snap and throwing it, and then the next time I take three seconds between getting the snap and throwing it, two and a half seconds would be my time to throw. So, who led the NFL last year in time to throw? Jalen Hurts, rookie. Makes sense. Rookies hold on to the ball too long all the time. Baker Mayfield, second place. Makes sense. He had probably the best offensive line in the league. Third place, Josh Allen. He had one of the best offensive lines in the league. Lamar Jackson was fourth, just under three seconds. Yeah, that makes sense too. He's kind of a running back back there, isn't he? He plays like a running back. He's going to hold onto the ball forever because he's scrambling around trying to make plays. And fifth place went to one Russell Wilson. Now, there are a lot of reasons why Russell Wilson held onto the ball as long as he did last year. Some of it was on him. Some of it was him just simply not understanding that he needed to have a clock in his head go a little bit faster than it was. Some of it was because he would just see the open man and not throw the ball or have a play to be made and just not make the play. But I'm not here to really talk about that part of it because there's a much bigger thing that needs to be addressed here. The offense that Russell Wilson was in last year called for him to hold on to the ball for a long time because it was a lot of deep passes down the field, which meant you had to wait for the receivers to get down the field. It was a lot of just one-on-one, -on -one, man on man our receiver tries to beat your defensive back stuff, which when it doesn't work means that people aren't getting open, which means you just have to hold the ball. And there wasn't any real scheming receivers open or uh, manufacturing quick, easy, automatic throws that you see in most NFL offenses which allow you to get the ball out of your hands in less than a second. We didn't do that. We basically just had Wilson drop back, wait, 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 wait. Okay, DK's open 60 yards down the field. Let's just hurl this ball down the field. Stuff like that. This year, we should be getting away from that stuff. <clears throat> this year, we have an offensive coordinator, a new offensive coordinator who should be bringing in a new system, stuff that he learned from the... Sean McVay offense. And if you scroll down through here a little bit, 
and you go through towards the QBs who had less time to throw on average, you'll get to Jared Goff down closer to the middle of the pack. 2.76 seconds. I know it's only 0.2 seconds. That 0.2 seconds means a lot. That 0.2 seconds puts him closer to the middle of the pack when it came to quarterbacks. Because as you can see, the number one quickest to throw quarterback last year, Ben Roethlisberger, he only had 2.3. So the difference between the top and the bottom is not huge here in terms of the number. But it makes all the difference on the field because so much happens in a single second. So that is the investment the Seahawks made to try to keep Wilson from getting hit. That is the investment the Seahawks made to try to keep him from ending up on his back all the time. Not any one offensive lineman, okay? Uh, swapping out Ethan Posick with Creed Humphrey probably would have made the offense a little better. The offensive line might have been a little better. Swapping out Brandon Shell with Lane Johnson would make the offensive line better. But more than any of those hypothetical moves you could make, the most important thing this team did this offseason, which will have a bigger impact than any one offensive lineman player could ever have, is getting a new offensive coordinator who is going to start implementing his schemes and his systems that will almost certainly have Wilson getting rid of the ball faster and having more manufactured, wide-open, easy throws, easy plays. So don't worry about the offensive line so much is what I'm going to say right now. Don't worry about it that much. I know we didn't do a ton to improve it, but bottom line is I don't think we needed to do a ton to improve it. We have good stuff on this offensive line. The offensive line played well last year, but they can't block forever, okay? So that's what I have to say. I'm going to get out of here. Peace out. Go Hawks. And that's the way I see it. This offensive line, I know there are people out there who think that, you know, a couple of the players on this line just suck. I don't think they do, and I don't think the numbers will back up the fact that they suck. I think the numbers indicate pretty strongly that these players are anywhere from passable to elite, and that should be good enough if the offensive scheme is solid. So Waldron was the investment. Let it play out. All right. See you guys later. Go Hawks.